have my dog Marley with me. Let's see. Let's see if I can get both of these going. Cross your fingers and wish me luck. Okay. I think I'm live. I think I'm live on both. Whew. Deep breaths in. Okay. My name is Amy Lemons and I am going to be reading both Instagram and Facebook. One of my favorite stories. This is called the Panda Problem. And because we are stuck in quarantine, we also have my dog Marley who will not leave my side. So you'll get to read a story with me and with Marley. Okay, so I see that Facebook is going. Hello, Rebecca. Instagram, I hope you're here too. Okay, so first of all, before I get started, I wanted to just talk about pandas for a minute. I want to I want you to think, hmm, what do you know about pandas? So while we're inviting people, bring your kids in here, tell your friends, come watch, come watch a story called The Panda Problem. We're going to do a drawing afterwards, and I think you're really going to like it. Um, but I want you to think, what do you already know about pandas? I bet there are some things that you, you just know from maybe reading some other books, Maybe, uh, I don't know, seeing something on TV. Maybe even you've learned something about pandas before. What, what do you think? Can you tell me something that you already know about pandas? Or maybe tell someone that's around you something that you already know about pandas? Okay, so I'm going to give you five. Oh, Anna knows that pandas climb trees. Did you know that pandas climb trees? Do you know where pandas live? Let's see. Hmm. This book may give you this cover. This is a fiction story, but this cover may even give you a little idea about where pandas live. Hmm. I'm going to give you five really interesting facts because I want you to know a little bit about pandas before we start reading. And I want to make sure everybody gets in here and they don't miss our book. So I'm going to show you a real picture, a photograph of pandas. You can see, oh, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Let me give you five really interesting facts about pandas. Maybe some of these, you know, maybe some of these you don't. Okay. First of all, pandas live in thick bamboo forests in China, high up in the mountains of China. Did you know that? Did you know that pandas live in thick bamboo forests? Wonder why they live in bamboo forests. Can anybody tell me why they live in bamboo forests? That's right. They live in bamboo forests because they eat so much bamboo. Did you know, get this, they eat, uh, oh, am I, am I frozen? Am I working? Let's see. If I'm not working, maybe somebody can help me out here. Can you see me? Can you not? I'm not sure. Can you tell me in the comments, can you see me on Facebook? Hmm. Some people are saying it's frozen. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. So they live, they live. Okay. It's working for some people. So if it's you, maybe it's your internet and not mine. <laughs> okay. So anyways, they live in thick bamboo forest in China. Okay. Now I got lots of comments there. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. Okay. They, did you know they eat bamboo for 12 hours a day, 12 hours a day. I know that your mom and dads are probably like, Oh, can you stop eating? You're eating all of our snacks. But did you know that pandas eat for 12 hours a day? Oh, I, if my kids ate for 12 hours a day, we would not have any food in this house. But not only that, they are omnivores. Do you know what the word omnivore means? It means that they eat bamboo, they eat plants, but they also eat fish. They don't eat a lot of fish, but they do eat some 
fish. Okay, so they live in the thick bamboo forests of China. They are omnivores. They eat both fish and bamboo. Did you know that their babies are born blind? They are blind and they can um, see around six to eight weeks, okay? And did you know, this is really interesting because we know that a lot of bears hibernate, but pandas, they don't hibernate. They actually will just climb down to wherever they need to go in order to find the bamboo that they need. So they eat bamboo. They live in thick forests in China. They eat bamboo. They eat for 12 hours a day. Oh my word. They also eat fish, but not very often. Their babies are born blind and they don't hibernate, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so now that you know all that about pandas, I wanna read our story. Are you ready to read our story? Okay, so now this is the panda problem and it is written by Deborah Underwood and it's illustrated by Hannah Marks. And this is a really, really funny story that I hope that you enjoy. I know that I enjoy it. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a panda who lived in a beautiful bamboo grove, but the panda had a big problem. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Do you see the bamboo, the, the bamboo tree? Um, nope. Uh, excuse me, because the author said they had a big problem and the panda said, no, no, I don't. Um, I, I don't have any problems. I've got a lovely view, lots of bamboo to eat on a sunny day. What could be better? Psst, um, <clears throat> I'm the narrator. This is my story. And, and you are the main character. Oh, the bamboo's not having this. Ooh, the narrator's not having this. The, the main character. Ooh, that sounds important. Um, it, it is important, but you, you need a problem. Why? So that you can solve the problem. That's how stories work. Have you ever read a story where there's a problem, there's a solution, there's a main character? This is what we need going on. So, what's your problem? Do you want to go somewhere? Nope. Are you afraid of spiders? Mm, nope. Huh. Do you need a friend? Uh, no. Do you wish you could fly? Nope. Hmm. Do you wish that you were green? Nope. Well, I mean, is your paw sore? Oh, let me check. Mm, nope. No problem here. He likes where he lives. He's not afraid of spiders. His paw isn't sore. How am I supposed to tell a story if you don't have a problem? This makes it very difficult as a narrator. Well, I don't know. Looks like you're with the you're the one with the problem, buddy. Whew. This panda's giving me a hard time. I don't know about you. Hey, maybe you're the main character and I am your problem. What? That's ridiculous. You're right. How could a sweet little panda like me be a problem? Unless, oh no, oh brother. I started playing the banjo really bad. Hey, 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 where did you get that? Where do you think that the panda got a banjo? Oh my goodness. Already causing me a problem. And what if I hung upside down and sang the bamboo burp song? Bamboo burp, bamboo burp. Oh, you are definitely starting to feel like a problem. What other kinds of problems do you think the panda is going to cause for the narrator? Do you think it's going to get really problematic? 
Whew. Great! And what if it started raining jelly beans? Now there's a problem for you. How will you explain that? Uh, you know what? Next time, I'm going to narrate a book about rocks. Nice, quiet rocks. And what if a bunch of aliens landed? How could you possibly tell a story about a burping panda and jelly beans and aliens? Aliens? There's no such thing as aliens. Boink! Well, hi aliens. Welcome the aliens to our story. Now we have jelly bean rain, a banjo playing panda, and aliens in our book that was supposed to be about pandas. Whew. And what if we built a boat? Oh, and sailed. Oh my goodness. Going sailing with aliens. I do believe this panda is becoming a problem. To Antarctica. Oh boy. But the setting of this story for your story is a bamboo grove. There are no penguins in bamboo groves. Now the panda has changed the setting of the story. Can you believe that? Who? Okay, we've got a main character, you, which is me, and a problem, me. So what happens next? Well, sometimes the problem gets gets worse, okay? But that won't happen now because things cannot get any worse. Oh, can't they? What if suddenly there were... Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. What do you think the panda's going to do next? What do you think the panda's going to do next? Two pandas! Can things get any worse? Of course they can if you have two pandas that are causing lots of problems. Oh, boy. Lug, lug, splosh. Arr. Look at these pandas. They're sailing. Whew, that looks like a big mess. Whew, that was a lot of work. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. And, and, and I'm, I'm hungry. Oh, very hungry. They've worked up a pretty big appetite sailing all the way to Antarctica, I would say. Um... Um, I, I, I think we have a problem. Whew. Finally. Now, what is your problem? I would love to know. What is your problem? You've caused me all the problems. Let's see. Um, we're very hungry and there's no bamboo in Antarctica. Hmm. Well, well, that is a problem. Now, how are you going to solve the problem? How do you think the pandas are going to solve this problem? This problem that I will tell you that they created. Hmm. I'm curious to see. Oh, I, I don't know. Oh, I'm too hungry to think straight. Have you ever been so hungry that you had a hard time thinking as well? I haven't had lunch yet, and I'm about to feel that way, too. Look, the alien says, glippity, glippity, glork. Hey, great idea, alien. Okay, narrator, if you get us home, we will stop making problems and help to tell your panda story. No banjos, no burping, no penguins. Really? Well, all right. Hey, I can get on board with that. <clears throat> um, now I get to tell my story. Together, the pandas and aliens came up with a great plan. The pandas and aliens spelled out, help with jelly beans. The alien ship scooped everyone up in its tractor beam. Clip, clap, glue, woo, clippy. 
the penguins say, I find this story really hard to believe. And the other one says, this is fiction. Anything can happen. And drop them safely back into the bamboo grove where everyone settled down to bamboo and jelly beans as a feast. Oh, what a satisfying ending. Oh, I'm really sleepy now. Wake up, wake up, wake up. We need to help the narrator tell a story. We promised. Do you think that pandas are going to tell a story? Because they look awfully sleepy now that they've had a feast of bamboo and jelly beans. That's okay. Let's try again tomorrow. Trust me, I'm sleepy too. Hey, why don't you tell me a bedtime story? Sure. We are story experts now. Once upon a time, there was a narrator, but the narrator had a big problem. Nope. The narrator says, you know what? I don't want to listen to your story because y'all have caused me a big problem today. Okay. Now that we have enjoyed the panda problem, where the pandas actually create all kinds of problems for the narrator, and it, the, the pandas were learning to tell a story, right? I want to show you something that you can do before we start drawing, because I'm going to show you how to draw this panda and a couple of his problems. And I hope that you really enjoy that. So you'll need some paper and maybe a pencil, and then you can color it and all of that fun stuff later. But I want to show you something that I've made, and I'll tell you where to get it here in a little bit. I made you a story template that you can tell. I'm going to use this one because it'll probably be easier to see blue. And it's called The Huge Problem. And this is a story that, it's like a framework of a story, but you fill in a lot of the blanks. So you create your character in your setting. You use adjectives and verbs and all of these things um, to create your story. So I want to share with you the story that we created called The Huge Problem. And then you can go and you can find the story at amylemons.com and you can fill in and create your own story and share it with your loved ones. So let me read you. The Huge Problem by Amy Lemons. Are you ready for this? Once upon a time, there was a lion who lived in the garage. It was a, a tiny place, but the lion had a huge problem. The lion was terrified of everything. However, there was one thing it was more afraid of than others. Penguins. Yep, you read that right. Big, scary penguins. Every morning, the lion would wake up to, and go on a morning stroll to gather kiwi and corn. Hmm. All the lion wanted to do was stroll lazily through the park without worrying about penguins. So one day, the lion decided enough was enough. It mustered up the courage and gathered its friends. With their dolls in hand, they began walking towards their enemy. They shouted, we aren't scared of you. To their surprise, the penguin said, okay. They fist bumped and became instant friends. So you can write your own story. All you have to do is fill in the blanks with, with different animals and things and settings. And you can create your own story to share with your friends and family. You can pick whatever animal you want. You can make it afraid of whatever you want it to be afraid of. But now... Are you ready to draw a panda? Drawing with kids is one of my most favorite things to do. It makes me feel so relaxed and calm. And I know that right now, this can be a scary time for a lot of us, especially when we're at home and we are missing our friends and we're missing our teachers. And I promise you, your teachers are missing you too. If they could, they would love to read a story to you and they would love to draw with you and teach you. So I hope that this helps you feel like you're a little bit at home, like you're back in the classroom. So we're going to draw a panda. And now all you need right now is a pencil and paper. I am going to draw with a black marker so that you can actually see my panda. Because if I drew with a pencil, you wouldn't be able to see it. But I always suggest starting with a pencil. Now, here's what I always tell my students. You do not have to draw your panda 
exactly like my panda is. You can make your panda look however you want it to look. But I want to show you how to draw one just in case you would like to learn. You can make yours look like mine or you can add whatever you want to it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with our paper horizontally. That means that it needs to be going a long ways this way, not up and down, but sideways so that we have enough room for the panda and all the problems. Now, I do want to show you what my finished product looks like, but yours does not have to look like this, okay? I like to show you so that you kind of know where you're going with this and you have an idea in mind, but once again, make this your own art. Oh, that's upside down. Okay, so here's my panda. I drew a spider and I drew one of the aliens, but you can add whatever you want to to it. You can add, add the bamboo forest in the background. You could make it in Antarctica. You could put raining jelly beans all in the background. That's up to you, okay? So this is what it's going to look like if yours looks like mine. If not, that's okay too. Also remember that we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking to have fun and to do our very best. So don't worry about getting all your lines perfect and drawing her. No way. We just want to have a good time drawing a panda. Does that sound good to you? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, okay. I'm going to come this way, making sure you can see me. I have my paper horizontally and I'm going to start with the panda's head and it's going to be a circle in the center of the page. Now I have to give the panda ears and I also want to add some other details. So I want it to be a large head, large circle or oval, but I can't make it go all the way to the top because I'm going to need room for the ears. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna start with a large oval or circle in the center of your page, leaving some room on the sides and at the bottom. I do like to fill up most of my page because that's just what I like to do. You could see that I colored my whole entire page. I didn't leave any white spaces. The good thing about a, a panda is there's a lot of white on it, so it is less coloring to do. Okay, so we have the panda's face. Now we're gonna do the ears, and we're gonna do that by drawing a curved line to connect one side to the other. Watch me first. So I'm gonna start with the, the ear over here, and I'm gonna do a curved line just like that. It's kind of like an upside down U. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side, a curved line on both sides. So now, oh, my ears are uneven, but that's okay, because we're not looking for perfection. So we have the oval and we have the ears. Do you have that too? How's your drawing coming? Remember, it's okay if it's not perfect. We're not looking for perfection. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do around the eyes. So pandas have black, around their eyes. So we're gonna do two large ovals inside of the face. Oh, I'm getting a little shaky drawing like this. Okay, two large ovals. Hopefully your ovals aren't as shaky as, aren't as, shaky as mine. I didn't account for having to draw like this. Okay, so I have the two black circles and we'll color those in in a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the eyes in the center. So I just do um, smaller circles inside of those ovals, just like that. So I have my face, my ears, my ovals, and then my eyeballs. Y'all got that so far? All right. Then I need to do the black part of the eyes. He was a crazy panda, so I like giving him crazy eyes. So here's what we have so far. So we have the face, the ears, and the eyes. Y'all have that? Are you ready to move on? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. This is a really simple thing to draw. I've drawn it several times now, um, and it's always a lot of fun, I think. Okay, so next we're gonna do the nose. The nose is underneath the eyes, kind of in the center. It almost looks like an upside down Hershey's Kiss. So it's like a rounded triangle-ish, okay? So we're gonna go, you can make a curved line right there right underneath your eyes, and then you're gonna curve it around to make the nose. Look good? All right, okay, okay, okay. Now we're gonna do, do the mouth, and we're gonna do a straight, just one straight short line. Don't go all the way down. Straight line coming off of the nose. There we go, there we go, okay. 
All right, now we're gonna do the mouth. This panda has a lot of different facial expressions, so you can do whichever mouth you want. I'm gonna do like a silly smile. And so that's going to look like kind of a curved line coming over here to the side to start with. And then I'm going to connect these two points by doing a larger curved line underneath. Just like that. Okay, so now I have the panda's face with its ears, its eyes, its nose, and its mouth. Now all I need to do is do the body in the extra thing. So to do the body, I'm just going to do a curved line from the face to over to this corner and from this side of the face to the other corner. So it's just a, a really easy curved line, curved line, and that gives me the body. If you have enough room, you could also do like the stomach. That's white because this part on a panda is black and then the belly is white. Okay, so now I have my panda. Um, mine, this one looks a little bit better. <laughs> if we want to remember. Remember what it looked like whenever I was drawing it not sideways, okay? Now I'm going to add some of the things. So you could do raining jelly beans. You could do the bamboo forest, the aliens, the spider, the penguins, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a spider over here in this corner. So I'm just going to start and kind of my open space with an oval. And I'm going to make my spider hanging upside down. So I'm actually gonna put his eyes down at the bottom and its mouth up at the top. There we go. And then I'm gonna give it eight legs. They're just like little L's, four on each side. Got that? Now we're gonna do the silk, just kind of curvy Q line to the top of the page. Okay, so now I have my panda and I have a spider. You could do whatever else you wanted to do. Like we talked about, you could draw the, one of the settings in the story. And then let me show you, um, when you're coloring your panda, if you want it to look like a panda, they have black ears, they have black around their eyes, a black nose, and then their body is black. But if they have, you have a stomach on it, you can leave that white. And then I drew the spider and I drew the alien. Now, if you want to do this later, you want the instructions or maybe you even want to write about the story. Okay. If you want to write about the story, I also have a writing sheet. So on amylemons.com, you can do, you can get the directions for the directed drawing. You can get the story, the writing to write about the story. And you can get the story frame to write your own story, uh, The Huge Problem. Okay, so I hope that you really, really enjoyed. Let me show you this cover one more time. I just have things everywhere. This is my life. Um, the Panda Problem was our story. And I really hope you enjoyed drawing a panda. Now, here's what you need to do. You need to head on over to Hope and Wade King and do Class Fit. We got to get up. We got to get moving. We got to get our muscles going and get our bodies fit. Got to move every day. So head on over to Hope and Wade King to do Class Fit. That starts at 1230, which is in just one minute. And I hope that you enjoy reading and drawing and writing a story and getting fit. Have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Bye.